Hello, hello, my loves. Happy Thursday, you guys. I hope you guys are doing wonderful. Let me get in this chair. I'm sliding down a little bit. So I hope you guys are doing wonderful. And I want to share something real quick with y'all. It's crazy, but it, it made me think about, I, I don't know, just crazy stuff. Last Saturday, I stopped by a client's house and I was doing a cleansing. And I shared this on my personal um, Facebook page. I'm sorry, the cats are trying to get my attention. But I found myself in the middle of a shootout, like, you know, the pow, pow, bang, bang shootout. And I was like, what the fuck? I thought the guy was moving towards me and shooting, but he was actually shooting at the car behind me. It took me a minute to figure that out because the car behind me started shooting back. And so I'm like, oh, what the fuck is going on? So I'm under my dashboard and I'm trying to get out the way and everything. And I'm trying to look because, you know, I don't want to get shot in the head trying to peep up and be nosy or whatever. I'm just like, okay, stay down here. In the movies, when they be doing that shit, you know, driving down, where, you know, you can't see the street or whatever with the shit. No fucking way. I couldn't see shit. I was hitting the gas and trying to steer. Couldn't see shit. But everything turned out well, because, of course, I'm here, and everything was, was fine. In fact, I had just got through doing a cleansing. I had on all my whites. I had leaves and stuff all over me. We put protection oil on at her house. And so I think I was really protected. I was like, my spirits were just like, yeah, no, we're not even touching it. In fact, the lady in front of me, her car had bullet holes in it. And then a guy behind me that was shooting, hit, their car got hit too. My car didn't have anything done to it. So I was blessed, 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 blessed. But what, what it made me think about was, of course, I've never had a fear about death. But then again, I've never been in a situation like that. And I, my life didn't flash before my eyes. I can tell you that for sure. Because I was trying to get the hell out of Dodge. I was like, it ain't time. It ain't my time. I ain't going. I need to get off the street. I need to get out of this. And that's what my thought was. But then when I was driving home, I was like, okay. When I was sitting up there. And I was, you know, in my car fidgeting with my phone or whatever. And I heard the pop, 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 pop. And I thought it was fireworks at first until I looked up and saw the guy like coming towards me and just shooting. And I was like, what the fuck is this? Like, what is going on? Like, it was surreal. And I feel like that my response time was so slow. I don't know if anybody's ever been in a situation that is traumatic or scary or whatever. And it seems like it's taking you forever to get past it. Like, you know, it probably was like a couple of seconds but I feel like it took me a whole minute to duck down. It took me a whole minute to figure out how to shift my car into gear. It took me a whole another minute to hit the gas. I feel like I was there forever. And I kept going, what the fuck? Did time slow down or was it just my mind just trying to process everything? And of course, I think it was my mind trying to process. But Ugon Hector did a a series or I think it was a video and you could probably find it on YouTube on under Ugon Hector or Papa Hector where it was like um the power of death and like preparing for death and everything like that because of course you know I know I'm not gonna live forever but it kind of dawned on me it was like damn you know it was crazy stuff that I thought about do I have clean underwear on like if the ambulance comes and gets me you know, do I have on my good pair of panties? You know, do they not have holes in them? Um, you know, did I put enough deodorant on? Like stupid stuff, you guys. Stupid stuff I was thinking about. Um, you know, would my kids, you know, have to identify me in a, in, you know, in a bag? Just crazy stuff that was going through my head. And then I was like driving and I thought about that when I was driving home. I was like, am I prepared for death? And I was like, hell no, I ain't prepared for death. It got me to thinking, okay, you got to get serious with some things. You you know, you really need to look into life insurance. You really need to look into, you know, your kids and, and, and you know, your animals being able to be taken care of. Of course, I put some money aside for my kids if something happens to me. Um, but, of course, I can put them in a better position. And then it was like when I got home with them, I was like, okay, so if something had happened, say I didn't make it home, what's the plan? And neither one of them was like, Ugh. We ain't got no plan B. And then that really bothered me because it's like, no, we got to get them prepared. Um, and it just, I don't know, getting older, especially, you know, I'll be 55 this year. And I'm like, shit, you know, you you might not be here. You know, I ain't claiming it now. If y'all listening, I ain't saying come take me out. I still got shit to do. I feel that. And that's the, even that day I felt that like, no, I ain't ready. But I'm saying this um, 
because I know that we're, we're still dealing with the pandemic. Um, I know they don't talk about it as much, but we still have people that are getting sick. We still have people that are dying. We still have a lot of things in this world that are kind of going backwards. And I, I just want to put on you, are you ready for it? Are you in a position to where you can, you know, if you have family or you have people that are dependent on you, are they prepared for you not to be here? It really kind of got deep with me. It was like, dang, you know, you you think that you are. And then it's kind of like, man, I don't think I am. Especially when I talk to my kids, I'm like, I don't think I'm putting them in the best position for themselves. Um, and some of you might, if, you, if you've if you ever experienced this, let me know if, if this is something that you've thought about. Because I just felt like out of everything that could have been going on through my head, it was really, I went back to to that video that he did. And it was like, if they go through my room, what are they going to find? Um, you know, it's the things that they need to have in a place where they can get them. And I was like, yeah, you you really need to get serious with this. And I mean, you know, of course I was blessed. I trust my spirits. They were 100% with me. Um, but I do know that the time will come, you know, and I'm not afraid of death. Never have been. I know that, you know, you, you live and then you die. That's always been my the logic of my mind. But share in the comments if some of you have ever been in a situation where, you know, it really kind of made you look at things a little bit deeper. It's like, okay, normally I'm just going to work and coming home, going to work and coming home, but maybe I need to be doing something more. Maybe I should travel more. Maybe I shouldn't put this off more. It's just really a lot of things where I was like, I don't have any regrets, but could I do some things better? It was kind of like in my head. So let me know if y'all, you know, had any experience or you've even had those thoughts or is it just a, a older woman that was going through something and you know it was like yeah you might need to do some things a little bit better the cleansing and everything went amazing at her house i felt good i felt you know protected when i left and i'm 100 in that situation i was but it really kind of made me think like okay is there something else that I need to be doing right now? Is there something else I need to be focused on? And I think with everything changing, we do. We need some type of plan. We need a plan B. Are we going to be here? Are we moving? Are we relocating? Are we with the people that we need to be with? Are we putting energy in relationships that are just wasting our time? You know, are we working jobs that just no longer really, you know, fulfill us, don't give us the money? What, like, what are we doing? What are we doing and what could we be doing? Is this the time to make changes and stuff like that? You know, I don't know. I kind of went down the rabbit hole with it, but I'm back. I'm back and we're here to do readings. So let me know, you guys. All right. Messages from my people. Oh, before we start. So Nancy, the lady that I went to her house, gave me this bay leaf. Y'all, this is like a bay leaf on steroids. Like I could write a whole book. I really could. It would be like, okay, yes, money coming in from the business abundantly times three. I am, you know, anointed and blessed. My health has improved. The love of my life has come in and he or she gives me healthy love. Um, you know, I pray healing all over my, I mean, literally, you could write a book on this Bailey. Look at this. Look at this. It was freaking crazy. She gave me a few of them that I burned last night. But I was like, I've never seen bay leaves that huge before. Now I know that I need to look for bay leaves that huge. All right. Let's get into the messages. Ask your ancestors, your God, your God is the deity that you work with. What are the messages from you? One through six. What do you need to hear? What is going to open up for you? Messages for my people. Of course, if it does not apply, let it fly. It may take a little while to let it marinate some. All right. Messages for the people. And if y'all see me sweating over here, y'all, my AC is out. So pray for me. I'm in Texas in this goddamn heat with no AC. You know, I might lose some weight because, shit, I'm sweating. My appetite is not there. I'm like, God damn, you get hot, y'all. When you get hot, 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 you don't want to do nothing. You just want to lay down, no sheet on you, clutching your pillow. It's, it's traumatizing. So, Spirit, I have been traumatized, traumatized, traumatized twice uh, this month so far. I, I must have one more coming. 
has to come in threes. It can't be anything bad from spirit. Maybe I can't get ice cream or something. Let it be something simple. Stay out of my favorite ice cream. Thank you, spirit. Card number two. What do we need to hear? I know my spirits be like, you be asking for some of the craziest things that don't that really we we should not even be entertaining, but they do. But they do because they love me and I love them. Let's see something flips. Let's see what it is. Okay. All righty. Card number four, please. Oh, that came out. And what's going on with card number four, Spirit? What's going on with card number four? Okay. All righty. Card number five, Spirit. Card number five. Mm-mm. Card number six. Don't let that fall out. Now, why is that spirit? Card number six. Why is that? Okay, so let's see. Card number one. Why? Card number one. Why is that? Okay. All right. Voodoo, where that bird at? Where that bird at, boy? Voodoo came in yesterday with a bird. And I was doing a reading, so I couldn't stop the reading and go chase him. So I finished the reading. I see all these feathers and blood and everything all over the place. Still can't find the bird. So I'm like, where did you put the bird? Did you put it in my bed? Did you Where, where did you put the bird? Still can't find it. He walking around here looking like he looking for it. Ugh. Cats, y'all. Card number one. Card number one, we had, the first card that came out was assert yourself, like really put your foot down with something. And so I was like, why does this person need to do this? And it could be that you are overwhelmed. You may be working too hard. You may be dealing with someone that is putting a lot on your plate. You may be struggling with, you know, a job that is, you know, every time you clear your desk here, they come again with more paperwork and it's like, oh, I'm overwhelmed. And spirit is saying, put your foot down, you know, put boundaries around you. Some of you could be dealing with someone that is really just kind of forcing an issue with you. Like, you know, what are we doing? What are we going to do? This could be you talking to somebody else and saying, look, you know, you need to go ahead and get your shit together. Or you need to go ahead and do whatever you need to do because you're overwhelming me. You're putting a lot of pressure in on me. If this is a supervisor or a boss or a manager, some of you might be having to really go to somebody and talk. Now, of course, you can't tell them, you know. You know, you, you you put too much shit on my plate. Well, I guess it depends on where you work. But some of you might be having this conversation where it's like, look, I need you to go ahead and do this because I'm overwhelmed. I need you to take something off my back because I'm overwhelmed or I need you to help me. This could be somebody coming to you and talking to you about it. It's a general read. But I feel like somebody is feeling um, there's a heaviness that's coming in. And I think it's because you're letting people cross boundaries with you. So you may feel uncomfortable with conflict, but I feel like that if you want something to get better, this month card number one, you're going to have to be really assertive and there needs to be clear cut uh, a line of what you will and will not do. All right, card number two. Card number two, this is like watch your diet. There could be some weight creeping up. There could also be some food allergies or something that you're having a problem with. Um, I know a lot of people have been having issues with like their stomach, with constipation or... Um, even with bloating. And I feel like that there is something with bloating or there is some type of um, gas or, or something that you might be dealing with. For a few of you, this could be something that you literally are eating and it's just not, you know, reacting to your your body the way it should anymore. You know, the, the hardest thing you guys about getting older is that there's certain things that you just cannot eat. Like if you're having hot flashes, like salsa and hot sauce and stuff like that will take you to straight to hell. It will take you straight. Like you will be burning up. You will be sweating because the spices. For some people, you know, um, lactose intolerant. Like I think when I turned 45, man, ice cream in me, whoo. I'm just going to say that if I eat it, I have to be completely alone or else you would not even want to be in a room with me. So for some of you, you definitely could be having some type of 
aversion to food could be because of, you know, your body mechanics changing or, you know, your system not being able to hold it. For some of you, though, this could just be, you know, I'm depressed. I'm just eating. I'm trying to self-medicate myself. And spirit is like, cool, but watch what you put. It's not like, okay, don't eat. It's like put better things in your body. A few of you may even be feel uh, led to, you know, I don't want to eat meat anymore. You know, maybe I want to be a vegetarian or maybe I want to try that out. Or it could be that maybe, you know, I'm, I want to try a new diet plan out or something like that. But I feel like that there's going to be some changes that come in card number two, especially if you've been concerned about your weight. And I feel like a lot of it is emotional eating. Like I don't need it, but I'm going to go ahead and eat it. And for some, definitely, there could be some food allergies. All right. Card number three. Card number three, the first card that came out was home. And then we have speak up. Now, you could be dealing with somebody. <clears throat> Excuse me, you guys. Um, whatever's in the air is messing with my voice. Um, you could be dealing with somebody in your home or your home setting um, that may be pushing boundaries. I don't know for some of you if this is where you're overwhelmed and you're emotionally eating because maybe you're dealing with some situation in your house. Um, there could be something with eviction or um, even raising the rent for some of you. And I feel like that if you are dealing with this, relook at your paperwork, make sure that the person that's doing this is in their right, um, in their rights to do it. Um, and I'm just gonna say this because I think um, where I live during the pandemic, or really the last three years, they have raised the rent three different times. And I was like, okay, you do know where in a pandemic, a lot of people are not making money. They're not spending money. And of course, for them, they're looking at it too. We got to make money too. But for some of you, be careful. You could have somebody who is illegally trying to bring in more money. There also could be something where there could be illegal evictions. I feel like there's something for a few of you is just not above. Um, they're not doing it the right way. I just feel like that you have somebody could have a landlord or somebody, a roommate or somebody that's just being a little bit shady. So there may be, okay, I really need to talk to you. I really, because I don't like the way this is going or I don't feel comfortable with the direction that this is going. So I do feel like that there's going to be some type of conversation. Some of you may not want to have the conversation, but I feel like you need to, especially if it's affecting your money. Um, for a few, there might be a, an unexpected eviction. Um, if this is not you, you can have somebody that is leaving because I feel like that there's somebody that's trying to walk away from something, but they may not be paying. So for some of you, there may be this thing of maybe you ask somebody to do do repairs, make some changes, and they're going up on your rent and you're like, you know what, I'm out. I'm not going to stay here and pay this money because I don't feel like I need to. Some of you may have tried to talk to a person about this. If you have a roommate, this could be somebody who's trying to sneak out without paying the last month of rent. I feel like whatever it is, what's going on in your house needs some type of boundary. This could be in a home setting. This could even be in a spiritual house where it's like, I need to put my foot down and say what I need to say. But I just feel like something is not going well or not going the way that it's supposed to be. And some of you could definitely be dealing with a shady person or shady energy in your environment. Card number four, first card that came out was temptation. And I was like, what about this temptation? And then we got passion sexual sexual addiction or sexual seduction or it could be sexual seduction and sexual seduction addiction i don't know why i feel like somebody that is just going for sex so here's the thing if you are single if you are married you may have somebody who comes in and they're just like boom you know pow pow you know let me give it to you type of energy and you may feel like, okay, I, I'm with someone. I, I can't really do this with you. But temptation is there, which means that some of you are going to get pulled into this energy with this person of like, okay, I wasn't trying to go there with you, but I think I might go there with you maybe one time, maybe two times, maybe three times, maybe until I get caught. But I do feel like that whether you're with someone or not, you got somebody that's coming in that is, I, I want to say in heat. If they're not in heat, they're putting you in heat. Um, this could be somebody that you work with. This could even be, I keep feeling like if this person is a friend of your spouse or something, they, they may be trying to 
flirt with you. Um, I feel like that it's a sexual thing, though. It's not like, oh, let's go run off together and be in love in Never Never Land or whatever. I feel like that this person is like, I just want to hook up with you. You know, I want to hit it and quit it. Some of you, you may not hit it and quit it. You may do it a few times. I feel like if this is somebody and you're married or in a relationship, they're going to cause a problem. Because either you're going to get hooked on the sex or there's going to be some issue that comes in with this. Well, 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 let me know. In the, well, no, don't let me know in the comments. Because, you know, you some of, of y'all I read, y'all are couples. We don't want nobody looking at you like you're doing what? Don't put it in there. But card number four, there's definitely some booty that's coming your way. Don't get it twisted. Don't fall in love with this if this is something that they're just playing with. You know, it could be really, really good. But if you before you put your heart all into it, make sure that this person is moving forward with you. If not, this is just, you know, hit it and quit it type of energy. All right, card number five. The first thing that came out was watch your mouth and then we got feeling trapped. Now, you could have somebody that is just talking to you crazy or there may have been crazy conversations that were starting you to make you feel like, okay, I am limited. I cannot move. I don't feel comfortable with where I'm at or I don't feel comfortable with this the way this person is talking to me. Sometimes this is like verbal abuse. And you could be dealing with petty energy, like somebody who just wants to fight for no reason or they want to pick a fight for no reason. Because I kind of feel like this is like one person is, this is how they get off. This is their foreplay. Like, you know, I want to poke at you and get you all riled up so that you're talking to me crazy and I'm talking to you crazy. But I feel like there's somebody is feeling trapped in this energy, which means that you may be dealing with somebody and the way that they talk to you is making you feel very uncomfortable. It's like, I really don't want to have this kind of relationship with you. This could be a romantic relationship. This could even be a work relationship. But I feel like that there's a lot of pettiness or just uh, somebody poking to get a reaction. And I feel like if this is a work situation or a romantic situation, family or friends, the other party is like, I don't want to do this with you anymore. It's disturbing my peace. It's not making me feel comfortable. I feel like that maybe at some point y'all were kind of going head to head, but somebody's like, I don't want to play this game anymore. So a few of you, if this is a job, could be going to HR. If this is a family, some of you could be pulling away. If this is a relationship, I feel like somebody is like, I'm letting you go. But with the bob wire, it's painful. Whatever this move is, it's painful because it's like almost like I don't want to do it but I have to do a type of energy. And if you have somebody talking to you crazy, it could be that, yeah, I can't stay in this energy. The Bob wire is like, I need to leave, but every time I try to leave, I feel pain with this. So I'm going to stay here and take it. But I feel like if you're in this situation, card number five, it's coming to the end where it's like, I don't want to deal with it anymore. I just don't want to deal with it anymore. Card number six, we have self-imposed bondage that came out and then we have loneliness. So some of you are stuck in your own shit. This is when, when we see self-imposed bondage, this person can pull the string off. She can pull the blindfolds down and get out of the situation. She's choosing not to see what she needs to see. And it could be that there is this thing of, I don't have any support or I'm by myself or I'm lonely. So I don't, want to see. I don't want to take the blindfold off because then that means I have to look at something, you know, realistically. And for some of you, you're going to look at the situation and realize that you're the problem. It's almost like, okay, why did I get into this? Or why am I in this energy? Why do I feel this way? And it comes back down to you. This could be decisions that you're making. This could be, um, you know, depression or the environment that you're in where it's like, I am comfortable with this. So I'm here. I'm not trying to change it or move it or whatever. There's an energy of I'm comfortable because maybe if I look at this, I'm going to realize that, you know, maybe I'm by myself or I don't have the support or nobody is there with me and I don't want to see this. So I'm going to stay blindfolded and bound with this. And I think that it's going to be detrimental to you, card number six. This is literally you holding you back. This is not spirit. This is not anybody that is trying to stop you from moving forward. This is you making a decision that I don't want to change. I don't want to see anything around me. Uh, and it could be because you're, you're not wanting to deal with it. Whenever I see this energy, this is like 
people that don't check their bank accounts because they don't want to see what the balance is. And I've been there. So I know the energy because if I don't know it, if I don't see it, then it's not real. So I'm not going to look for my bank balance because if I see $5 in there, it's going gonna, it's gonna to ruin my day. So I'm just going to pretend that everything is okay because I don't want to see the reality of something. And for some of you, it may be really painful. It may be hard. Um, there possibly is changes that are going on with you and you're feeling it and you're knowing that it's there. But I wonder too, if this is kind of coming off of this, we, we got two people that are bound. We have somebody though that's moving away from the bob wire, which is a painful change to some strings or rope that are really thin, which means that you're coming to a point where it's like, okay, psh, I can be free of whatever this is. I can be free of whatever is holding me back. So card number six and card number five. Card number five, there may be a conversation that sets you free. It's painful, but I don't like the way you talk to me. I don't like where this is going. I'm going to go ahead and start separating from you. It's painful to separate. I don't know if I can do it. It's hurting me. And then we get over to the situation where it's like, okay, I need to go ahead and let go because this is not helping me. It's detrimental to me. I'm not moving forward, but I don't want to be lonely. I'm separating from something, but I don't feel like I want to be lonely. This could be anything. This could be family, a relationship, even with a job. Some people, a job is their whole life. That's how they identify themselves. And if I walk away from this job, who am I going to be? So I think that card number five and card number six definitely are having a hard decision with change. There's a struggle with change. For some of you, it could be with a house, a living environment. For some of you, it could have been a relationship. For some, it may be even bodily changes that you're doing for your health. Stress could be causing um, emotional eating and it's like, okay, I need to get healthier. I need to lose weight. So I need to eat better. But there's major changes. When you look at the whole, there's major changes that are coming in. And some of you are scared because you feel like you're alone in this in this change. You may feel unsupported in it, but sometimes I think you got to stand up and be your own supporter, your own cheerleader, your own warrior. You know, it's hard. I've been there. I'm not going to say it's easy. Um, you know, there was a time when I really depended on a lot of people to come through and, you know, do things. And then I got divorced and it was like, okay, everybody had their own shit going on. Nobody could do that. And I wallowed for like a year in that energy of victim, you know, woe is me. I can't do anything. Come help me. Come help me. Come save me. Come save me. And then one day I woke up and I was like, well, God damn it. I'm not, I must be the savior. Cause ain't nobody coming. I must be the savior. So let me go into my saving, you know, mode and make it happen. And it did. But I think there was a mind reset that had to happen. And for some of you, I think you're going to a, through a mind reset of, I thought I needed this to push me along this path. But now I'm realizing that I am the catalyst. I am the power. I am the savior. And some of you are still having a hard time, like figuring that out. Like, damn, damn. But I think you're coming to it. I really do. Spirit will be showing you some things in yourself that you need to see with this reading. All right, my loves. All right, you guys have a beautiful, beautiful day. If this reading resonates with you, let me know in the comments. I love reading them um, and definitely be safe out there. The world is getting crazy, you guys. So be safe. Watch your, watch all the way around, all the way around when you're moving, when you're maneuvering. All right. I love y'all.